Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at the most recent Bandai article on the official Dragon Ball Super card game website. We're gonna take a look and see if Bandai broke the meta here. Honest, in all honesty, this is a really cool thing that Bandai did here. They released an article where they talked about an Android 21 deck that they uh, built over at the dev team. And it's kind of cool. Now, I did look at the deck list. Uh, so definitely some things that uh, that I would personally change. Maybe they should sign up for the coaching down on the Patreon. If you guys are interested in that, go down in the description. Link is down there. But anyways, uh, yeah, I thought this was a really cool thing. Apparently, they've done articles like this back in like the set one days, if I'm not mistaken. But I started playing in set two. So uh, I had never seen an article like this before from Bandai. So I kind of want to just read through it. Look at the list they showed for Android 21. Because you guys know at this point, I'm a big 21 fan. Uh, I have 21 lists both on the channel and the Patreon. I've done many, many videos talking about android 21 i like the deck a lot kind of want to see what their take is on it and also talk about what i think about their list It's actually a set 13 list because some of the cards they include so we'll look at that but if you're new here definitely subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss any dragon ball super content already shout out the patreon down in the description below if you want to check it out anyways let's get started so announcement dev team column android 21 reborn greetings dragon ball super card game fans the battle of ocean booster has finally been released we and we hope you've had a chance to get your hands on some of the cards from this incredible set it's packed with powerful cards including new additions to help power up popular themes from the past which is a very cool thing about evolution booster i like that sort of side set they've done they basically steered away from draft boxes because while there are many many good cards in draft boxes some things with distribution and some of the other things about accessibility with draft boxes made the prices very very high so if you've been out of the game for a while this is a perfect opportunity to jump back in in this series of columns we're going to introduce three new decks while shining a spotlight on some of the new cards from battle evolution booster and uw4 which is basically set 13. this time we'll be looking at the android 21 deck which has received a radical new revamp here's the deck list so they have the deck list here in the kind of same format they do the star decks and stuff which is pretty cool it's nice that it's all just like laid out here but they also have a visual picture of the deck list which will be a lot easier for us to take a look at so right off the bat you'll notice seven unisons now personally i think that's kind of a lot i think seven unisons for any deck is a lot especially when you're considering multicolor. like the thing about dragon ball super right the combo step is so important that playing so many 10k combos plus seven unisons is quite a lot even in a blue deck where you have a lot of ways to manipulate energy i still think that's definitely a lot but uh i was kind of thinking about the majin buu unison in android 21 because of the fact that on your turn two you have the ability to ramp with energy amplification android 16 which obviously a great card that they're trying to include here i think that the buu unison in set 13 is a really really good unison i think it's held back a little bit by the fact that it doesn't gain markers but it's still such a strong card and you could play it on turn three thanks to your ramping ability now what i was thinking and i haven't necessarily put a set 13 deck list together yet but what i was thinking was that if you're going to be playing the boo unison odds are you're probably not going to play the 13 unison as well i think you got to kind of pick one or the other because seven unisons man that's asking for a whole lot of clunk that's asking for a lot of uncomboable hands and if your opponent's kind of just going all in on you and you don't have access to bean or maybe you don't have access to d magic you can be in a lot of trouble so with that in mind I'd probably pick one or the other, not necessarily both. The four speedy substitution, uh, I think it's a great card. I think it's a really good card. But I think the thing you'll notice with this list is it it uh, compromises a lot of ratios at like three and two and things like that to fit this card. And while it is a starter card, you're not really allowed to have starter cards in multicolor decks. Like, you know, turn one, you start by charging a blue green, right? You start by charging a multicolor. And then turn two, you almost always want to go into energy amplification. So when are you playing speed substitution? Maybe on turn three, maybe on turn four. Now, I guess you could charge a blue and then play substitution on turn one and then use your end of turn effect to put a blue green energy down. But I think there's some cards in the deck that you're not playing that, uh, for me at least, make it a little bit off so anyways super combo totally agree with it three god ceiling totally like it 21 bad omen i kind of think should be a four of because i think you really do want to charge it on most turn ones especially with four copies of the super 17 check land i think that's really the direction you want to go and then three beautiful scientists i like it i personally play two in my list because uh I, I play the arrival 17 or 16 rather the uh steadfast ally not the one they're playing in this list i do like that card a lot the six drop 17 they're playing in this list but uh, I personally don't play it because, yeah, it does trip a card out of their hand, but I'd rather get the other 17, which brings Beautiful Scientist out from the deck. So I, on my opponent's turn, I can arrive, ramp, pop a battle card, and have a blocker all in that same turn. And that seems to me like a really insane defensive play. 
and then when you start swinging with steadfast ally you start taking cards from their hands so i think it's just a little bit better than steadfast comeback but i do kind of like the fact that it's only a 200 year rival which does help you save on the uh on the energy there two copies of 17 and 18 definitely agree with that i play the same number of copies and then for android 18 i can totally see the argument for this card being a four of it's an insanely good card it does require you to have unison which they play seven so that makes a lot of sense but honestly this card's pretty format dependent like if there are not a lot of cards this thing can actually counterplay sure you still get a one energy blocker but i really wanted to be counterplaying battle cards with this so um against like king piccolo can be good and king vegeta against king vegeta rather in set 13 i think it can definitely be good but uh you have to kind of look at all the other decks in the format like dark broly this is not going to do much against and they're also not playing ss2 trunks for prospect which is a little bit uh you know causes me to question just a little bit definitely a bit curious about that but yeah i don't necessarily think this is an automatic four of unless the format kind of calls for it three being in 3d magic um i don't know why you wouldn't play 4d magic that's just my thing i think you just totally chop absolute release ball i think that's a side deck card at best personally i think you go 4d magic if you're not playing restoration and that's kind of one of the the uh conflicts i've had with building 21 is playing d magic and or restoration finding ratios to to fit both or just playing one or the other it's been a little bit tough and then i can totally see three bean in a blue deck but i think in blue green where you have so many 10k combos i kind of think that four bean is almost mandatory as we're in other blue decks four bean is not really mandatory but it's definitely very good i do like the, the heroines lineage scr pick here though i kind of just like how it's pointing at a you know budget scr option for a deck like this i do kind of like that a lot of course maybe hatch x probably better but we'll continue with the article now that we've kind of looked over the deck list because bandai does kind of address that so we have uh contents Android 21 deck concept deck overview deck go deck goals early game mid game counterplay considerations synergistic cards and then closing so 21 in concept this is a control deck that uses Android 21 scheme in the early game to create clone tokens which help fuels draw and energy reuse it pairs with blue green ramp cards and its ability to play powerful high cost cards is one of the greatest assets yeah i mean they pretty much hit the nail on the head which is cool because they designed the cards right so they should definitely know how those things work deck goals this is a dynamic deck that ramps energy to play powerful and expensive cards android 17 18 siblings revived from the battle evolution booster is a devastating finisher that allows you to place two threats from your opponent's hand in their energy once it hits a table victory is within sight yeah i do i do definitely think it's a really solid boss monster a really great card they printed to replace a violent predator for sure then we have hell's ultimate weapon super 17 as another great finisher is you can get three 21 bad omens in your energy dropping hell's ultimate weapon will force your opponent to lose three life as go into the red zone with four 25k battle cards little typo there it also negates energy exhaust so play it in your energy early and often yeah so slight deck building thing i think they kind of thought about was like you know super 17 can only play three androids from the energy so why would you play more than three copies of 21 right well you play more than three copies of 21 because you want to see it early and often right and just like they're saying with charging health ultimate weapon you want to charge 21s as much as you can and, and yeah they play speedy substitution to help get it in the energy right but uh beautiful scientist can also do it so and you also can obviously manually charge it so that works as well early game we have energy amplification android 16 as a key ramp card that effectively serves as the deck's engine it has the lowest energy cost of any ramp card in the deck so it's worth playing copies well into the mid game battle evolution booster includes super android 13 ever ending bloodlust a powerful unison card that you can play without spending energy lock down the clone tokens you send to your opponent build up your markers and create a defensive wall to safeguard your other strategies and in the mid game one of the deck's biggest selling points is its ability to jump the energy curve playing major threats faster than other decks can handle majin buu assault the agents of destruction from set 13 draws cards eliminates your opponent's battle cards and even has blocker play android 16 energy amplification on turn two and you can play this card on turn three giving your defenses a massive boost for the mid game totally 100 agree with that really really cool strategy but i think you know if you had played your your 13 unison on like turn one or two sacrificing that to play boo is going to be an immediate neg one so i think you would just play one or the other and not necessarily both if you don't have majin boo assault of ages of destruction in hand try playing 21 beautiful scientists to speed up your ramp instead besides her plus skill she also has blocker and a skill to remove your opponent's battle cards making her an excellent defensive option totally agree counterplay considerations super under 13 never running bloodlust strong defense it makes it easier to use using conditional counterplay cards like android 18 let the battle begin and godsling technique trunks 
Super Bandit 13 and Running Bloodlust in particular is a one cost blocker that can easily strengthen your defense. I think they kind of made a, another typo there. From there, you can use your leader skill to switch your energy to active mode and go on the offensive. Uh, Absolute Release Ball can also be played energy free by adding card from life to hand, giving you a great way to keep your opponent's battle cards from hitting the board. Again, personally, I think Absolute Release Ball is much more of a side deck card, can be good if you're going up against something like Topo uh, in red or other counter techs that are kind of like that. And then synergistic cards these are cards they talk about that aren't in the list but they kind of just you know discuss them a key card from battle evolution booster helps you play 21 cards play 21 bad omen to wipe your opponent's life in battle cards or play beautiful scientists to remove your opponent's battle cards while ramping have a variety of options to handle any situation is one of the deck's core strengths Android 16 is no slouch himself packing both a discard effect and double strike yeah i like this card in the main deck a lot a little bit surprised they opted to not main deck it but i do think it's pretty cool 21 scholarly gambit this barrier backed blocker helps you remove unsightly clone tokens you can also trade her in to prevent an opponent's boss tier battle card from entering play playing her at the start of your turn gives you maximum mileage from 21 scheme which prevents players from attacking after battle cards under play i think you actually need a card of this in your main deck right like you need this which is more expensive than the other option which is uh this, this green two drop piccolo i forget the name of it but i think you need either this or that card because on the turn you play your 17 18 siblings you need to somehow get around your own effect of uh the field card you need to somehow get around the summoning things of the field card so without a card like this that's gonna be pretty hard to do baby hatch saiyan destroyer a game ending ultimate that works with blue leader cards saiyan destroyer completely locks your opponent out of attacking for a turn giving you all the runway you need to end the game for good for sure i mean i think they kind of included heroine's lineage because it's um uh, you know one of the premier cards of evolution booster which is what this article is kind of meaning to um promote right so i think that's kind of why they did that in closing well what do you think the the cards we introduced today are just tip of the iceberg there are tons of synergistic new cards in battle evolution booster including the ramp based android 16 leader card so be sure to check out the card list stay tuned for the next article on april 30th where we'll be taking a look at another batch of cards from evo booster and uw4 see you then dragon ball super card game team so overall i mean i think this is a pretty fun video to do like we looked at how bandai goes about deck building right and don't get me wrong like there are definitely some things here i would change it's definitely a solid starting point for 21 right um but i mean we're not expecting them to be the most competitive players in the game right that's kind of what the uh the players outside the dev team are for um but i think this is a cool video to do just kind of get a look at what bandai is thinking i always like when they post articles like this so we can kind of get inside their heads but anyways guys i want to know in the comments below what you think about this video should i do another one when they make the uh article on april 30th let me know thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time